Hi guys, I am thrilled to report at this very minute we have a cool front blowing in through the collapse of global industrial civilization here in uh, Garfield, Texas on this now beautiful, it is Tuesday morning, I think it's May 7th, 2020 and my name is Sam Mitchell, this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza here at Collapse Chronicles for a few more days before taking a break until the biggest distraction of the 21st century blows over and we can think of a few other things to talk about other than how many humans are going to uh, be killed by the C word. Now, <clears throat> so for today's Chronicle of, of the Collapse, we're going to check up and with to see what James Howard Kunstler has on his mind. Now, <clears throat> I can't remember if the C word was mentioned in this article. Uh, I, I honestly don't know. There might be a C word. Obviously, the C word uh, is, is in the background of this article, but uh, you could, uh, he could have written the same article uh, without uh, the C word. So uh, this is just. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, Jim Kunstler has found something else to talk about other than Russia Gate. Uh, Kunstler just got kind of off track, uh, but he is back, back at it this week with his. Uh, this is from. Uh, Clusterfuck Nation, uh, his blog, Clusterfuck Nation, when the birdies sing like the fat lady, yes, when the birdies sing like the fat lady, you know, uh, Jim lives in upstate New York, where he's talking about here. Spring is popping now with a ferocious energy that can only remind the sullenly sequestered masses that life is going on without them. Every living thing busy making and doing out there, except the poor humans idled without work or purpose. That won't last long. People don't submit automatically to zombification when some pissant bureaucrats issue them $1,200 checks. They yearn to bust out like everything else on the living planet, and if they can't do it in a good way, well, okay, yes, the old well dot dot dot. <clears throat> the mega machine we constructed to drive this society has sucked a valve and thrown a rod. The machine is broken. No matter how much more fuel the, mega sh the mechanics pump in, one suspects somebody may have topped it off with Cairo syrup. Anyway, the machine got too big and too complex with too many extraneous bells and whistles and with way too much computerized cybernetic control built in so the mechanics barely noticed it was coming apart. They were too busy partying. That big machine is smoldering in a ditch for the moment. The dazed and bloodied passengers realize that the ride is over and now they must march on to get somewhere, anywhere away from this miserable ditch and the wreckage in it. The fine spring weather is their only consolation. And so here we are at a fraught moment in the convergent crises of corona panic and the foundering economic system that it infected with all its frightful pre-existing conditions. Of course, it isn't capitalism, so-called, that is failing, but the perversions of capitalism, starting with the appendage of the troublesome term 
ism. It isn't a religion or even a pseudo-religion like Zoroastrianism or communism. It is simply the management system for surplus wealth in a lavish, in a hyper-complex society, the management of wealth naturally grows hyper-complex too, with lavish opportunities and temptations for chicanery, cheating, fraud, and swindling the perversions of capital. It is in the interest of the managers to cloak all that hyper-complex perversity in opaque language to make it seem okay. How many ordinary Americans have a clue what all the municipal liquidity facilities, <clears throat> primary dealer credit facilities, primary and secondary market corporate credit facilities, money market mutual fund liquidity facilities, Main Street new loan facilities and expanded loan facilities, commercial paper funding facilities, currency swap lines, the TALFs, TARPs, PPPs, SPVs represent, besides the movement by keystroke of money from one netherworld to another, both conveniently located on Wall Street, usually to the loss of non-elite citizens generally, and to their offsprings, offsprings, offspring. Here comes another uh, chopper flying over. Uh, the, the chopper traffic, uh, at least around Austin, Texas, has quadrupled. Uh, in the past few weeks, I do not know what all of this extra helicopter traffic is about. <laughs> Hello. Anyway, back to Mr. Consular. Real capital is grounded in the production of real things, of real value, of course. And when it is detached from all of that, it is no longer real capital. Money represents capital, and when the capital is not real, the money represents nothing and ceases to be real money. Just now, America is producing almost nothing except money. Money in quantities that stupefy the imagination, trillions here, there, and everywhere. The trouble is that money is vanishing as fast as it is being created. That is because it is based on promises to be paid back into existence that will never be kept, on top of prior promises to pay back money that were broken or in the process of breaking. The net result is that money is actually disappearing faster than it can be created, even in vast quantities. All of this sounds like medical, metaphysical bullshit, I suppose, but we are obviously watching money disappear. Your paycheck is gone. That activity you started a brew pub, a gym, an ad agency, no longer produces revenue. The HR department at the giant company you worked for told you, don't bother coming into the office tomorrow or possibly ever again. Your bills are piling up. The numbers in your bank account run to zero. That sure smells like money disappearing. Wait until the pension checks and the snap cards mysteriously stop landing in the mailbox. There is going to be a lot of trouble. Ordinary Americans are going to get super pissed if money does not disappear 
from the stock markets also, they have seen this movie before. They will know for sure that they were played, that the class of people who hold most of the stocks are doing just fine, while everybody else stares into that old abyss, staring back at them. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near the Hamptons on that fateful day. All this because we just cannot face the task of reorganizing our national home economics to suit new circumstances. So nature will do it for us. Nature will furnish us with a marvelously efficient black hole where we can conveniently stash our fake money so that we will never have to see it again. Nature will bust up our giant institutions, our giant corporations, our giant networks of financial obligations, and after a period of confusion and social disorder, some clever humans will aggregate into smaller networks and reorganize their activities on a smaller scale that actually supports truthful relationships between the production of things deemed to hold value and money that represents those things. The beauty of springtime is sublime, and as Edmund Burke noted, that very beauty provokes our thoughts of pain and terror. Thank you, James Howard Kunstler, uh, for some intelligent commentary on uh, money disappearing. Uh, I'm going to be uh, publishing my interview with Bill Gady uh, to shut down Collapse Chronicles for a while on Sunday. My part, my parting interview with will be with Bill Gady uh, talking about the disappearance of money. That it is the money disappearing. When money disappears, the sixth mass extinction, including the extinction of the human race, will begin. If people do not have money, they still need to eat, and what do you think they're going to eat? They're going to eat their fellow earthlings, and when every fellow earthling has been eaten, what do you think is next on the menu? But you can hear more of that from Bill Gady on Sunday. And this is what uh, James Howard Kunstler had to offer as supporting evidence for Bill Gady's theory of uh, the collapse of a planet uh, kicking off with the disappearance of money. Anyway, I need to go make $230 of my money disappear into a windshield for my gas sucking truck. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye to $230. Oh, I do one. I am so sorry, guys. I, I have several people to thank for their kind uh, PayPal contributions. I know uh, Marty Knudsen, and I can't remember a couple more of you. I'll get to it. I do appreciate anyone supporting this channel. Uh, for the few more days I'm going to be on air before taking a break till the distraction blows over. Bye, guys.